Hello everybody, welcome to the last video in the series which is the mandolin. One amazing instrument, one amazing bit of history that I'm going to sort of tell you about with this instrument. And yeah, this is my love affair of this instrument. I had it for over 15 years, this one. And I'm going to talk to you about why this really is the best way to end this series of videos because it was the most important one. It sort of sprung off me getting other instruments. So stay tuned, enjoy the history, and I'll see you on the other side. The Bye. mandolin is an eight stringed instrument with four courses. There are other versions with 12 and 10 strings, but the most common and well known is the eight stringed and is usually plucked or played with a plectrum. Mandolins evolved from the lute family of instruments and can be dated back to the 18th century in Italy, but for a brief spell disappeared after the Napoleonic Wars. Its true history can be dated back to the Gitten, an instrument which dates back to the 13th century, which then developed into the Mandora and finally into the Mandolin. It was however with Pascal Venassa who was credited with helping create the mandolin as we now see it, adding steel strings and extending the fingerboard to 17 frets. The mandolin has had a few rises in popularity throughout its history, but it would be in its second wave of what is known as the golden age of mandolins that the mandolin was to cement its place as a staple instrument for future generations. This was due to the Third World Paris Fair, known as the Paris Explosion of 1878, where a group of Madrid students, otherwise known as the Spanish students, who were primarily a mandolin orchestra, took the fair by storm and gained international recognition. Along with their energy and newfound awareness of the instrument created by the day's hit sensation, a wave of Italian mandolinists travelled Europe in the 1880s and 1890s and in the United States by the mid-1880s, playing and teaching their instrument. The instrument's popularity continued to increase during the 1890s and mandolin popularity was at its height in its early years of the 20th century. Thousands were taking up the instrument as a pastime and it became an instrument of society, taken up by young women and men. After the First World War, however, the instrument's popularity again fell through gradually. Reasons cited include the rise of jazz, for which the instrument was too quiet. Also, modern conveniences such as automobiles and outdoor sports competed with learning to play an instrument for fun. So welcome back. Um, this is my Lorenzo uh, mandolin, made for Tunbridge in Kent, strangely enough. So literally down the road, this was made. It's a normal looped one. So as always you get your mandolin strings, you loop it in and you know you wrap it round. It really is just a beautiful instrument. It's actually staying in tune, which is good. It's quite a temperamental instrument this one for me, because sometimes it decides to stay in tune. Again, probably a film in this uh, new strings I'm gonna put on after this video. So it's be the last time these strings get played. Uh, so where to begin? Wow, okay, this one's gonna take a good old story, so sit down, enjoy yourself, and let me chat crap for a while. I love the mandolin, because without it, I probably wouldn't be doing a lot of the sort of acoustic music that I'd be um, playing and enjoying a different side of music. But more importantly, going back to the reason why I got the mandolin in the first place is an even better sort of story for me, because it meant that even up at my age now, I still love the artists and the bands that are involved in helping me get this. So, um, when I was in my, sit down everybody, story time. Um, <laughs> when I was in my early teens, I was doing that normal teenage thing where I was trying to discover myself, just trying to discover my musical taste. And I always knew, even before I was a teenager, that I was going to be like an alternative kid. I always sort of seemed to gravitate to that sort of spiritual sort of culture of things. And it just really made sense to me. And I was never sure that I was ever going to go down the metal route when I was a kid. But my God, when I did, I was fully committed to it and I never looked back. As you all know, like I said, I still love my metal music. But for me, um, I 
got given two albums, which was um, from the same band, which was called Goo Goo Dolls. And they're still one of my all time, in, in fact, out of the top five bands slash artists of all time for me, Goo Goo Dolls is not even not even a question that they're not even going to be in the top five for me. Um, because even though they might not be a great band that's going to set the world on fire, they are just, they're now a duo really, I suppose you could sort of say. But if it wasn't for them, like John Resnick and the lyrics and just the sound just really blew me away. And what was really interesting, and sometimes we can sort of talk about reasons as to why we sort of are put on this planet and when we sort of go quite in depth into it. But what was really, what I, what really I still look back on and think, God, that was quite weird. So yeah, I'd got the two albums that my mum's friend had given me, which was Boy Named Goo and uh, Dizzy Up The Girl. And Dizzy Up The Girl album, um, I love both albums. I was just listening to them intently. And she always used to, um, she'd given me a couple more albums as well, which were, one was a Lifehouse album and the other one was a Matchbox 20 album. And it's weird because I'll never forget those albums. They'll, they'll always stick with me. And I didn't realise that it was part of this American sort of soft rock, radio rock culture that was going on at the time. And it was going on just before, just before I was sort of like aware of it really for a while, actually, maybe a few years. And when I was listening to those albums, the, the track Iris by Goo Goo Dolls just stuck out like a sore thumb for me. And I didn't really know what the, what the instrument was that was just really resonating with me and turned out to be a mandolin and what was even crazier about that was I used to love that tune like just loved it loved it so I loved all of them I love Black Balloon you know yeah Name etc etc I love all these tracks anyway but Iris for me was really crazy and what I didn't realise was it was a huge huge hit um, and it was a huge hit because of the City of Angels soundtrack that had been put on and then well, as I got older, um, I realised that the film, the storyline to the film is incredible because it's based originally around a film called Wings of Desire, which again, just, whoa, like, what the hell? Like, an amazing story about an angel questioning his mortality, basically, coming back to Earth and questioning it. And it just, uh, if you ever get a chance to see the original Wings of Desire. So before City of Angels, Wings of Desire came out just before that. If you ever get a chance to see that film, watch it. It is amazing. All right, I'm just going to chuck that one out there. Watch it. This is where I question. I hope I've got the the album. I hope I've got the movie Wings of Desire. Please, please hope that's right. Because it's going to be a well bad nightmare if I did this. So yeah, um, and it just really was just such an incredible album. Um, movie, sorry, and the album Dizzy Up the Girl with Goo Goo Dolls obviously had the track Iris on it, and Iris was part of the soundtrack. So you get the idea, and then the mandolin was the main thing on it. And I was just like, I need to play this instrument. I need to get me one of them. And so the story truly begins. So not only did Goo Goo Dolls just completely blow me away. Even though, like I said, I openly admit they're not one of the greatest bands in the world ever, but for me, lyrically, they're amazing. And you've got to imagine, as well, you've got to imagine growing up as a teenager, and I was sort of that generation before the emo generation, so I came out roughly in the new metal generation, post-grunge sort of generation. So actually, to me, actually, being a teenager around that time is quite good, because there was so much amazing new, fresh music that came out. Also, trip-hop had started to come out as well, so you know, in the late 90s. So for me, it was like, wow, this is amazing. And um, anyway, I was just drawn to these sort of, those types of bands were really like the pre-emo bands. So they were really the bands that just had these amazing emotional lyrics and lyrics that you could relate to as a teenager. And they were just, you know, from all of the bands, Matchbox 20, like I said, you know, Dave Matthews Band, um, Goo Goo Dolls, Oh my god, Toad in the Wet Sprocket, that's a good one. Uh, and then you got bands, I suppose you got bands like Train that came out afterwards and they did Drops of Jupiter, I suppose everybody sort of knows that one and blah blah blah. So you, this whole American soft rock, radio rock culture, I think they'd sort of really call it. 
But to me, I just loved it because the lyrics were amazing. They just really were so good. Like, I just, they were so basic. And yet, there's a song, I mean, it's the other thing, like, I was trying to get good at songwriting. And I learned a lot from those types of bands, especially Lifehouse as well. I mean, Lifehouse and Goo Dolls were the two big ones for me. And then obviously it just inspired me to get a mandolin just because of this one track. But not only that, the whole culture of music just blew my mind. You know, and every time I don't tend to listen to those tracks as much anymore because I don't want to, I want to sort of, I want the track to take me back to that place again. And so I tend not to listen to them as much. And when I do, I really, you know, like I, I, I do sort of, you know, it does take me to another place, which music should do, you know, it should remind you of amazing places, positive or negative, I suppose. So with the mandolin then, because of Iris by Goo Goo Dolls, I purchased one, purchased one. I didn't, my dad bought it for me. So my dad purchased me one. And this one happened to be down the road from me. It's a Tunbridge. So it's even a personal connection because it's from Kent. And then, so the tuning that I have this one in is E, A, D, G. Okay, so basically, what you've got to imagine is you've got your guitar, if you're a guitar player, and it's basically tuned upside down. So E, A, D, G. And then it would be B, E. But obviously if you imagine a guitar, it would be the other way around. So it would be E, A, D, G, B, E. So does that make sense to everyone? So it would be upside down. Right, so it's the first top notes of the guitar, but placed in reverse. And that was it. So in the link below, I'm just going to get all this stuff out there. In the link below, um, you will see my first track that I solely wrote with the mandolin called The Wall. Or The Wall, as they would say in America. The Wall. And just check it out, see what you think. It's a rough demo, I made it ages ago. And it sort of went like, you know, went long. those chords nothing special but it's good because I managed to write a whole song with it and then I started getting really cocky and that was basically it really I just started playing um one other interesting story I can tell you about my love affair with the mandolin you gotta imagine sorry I, I know I've probably said this in a few of these videos. I don't plan what I'm going to sort of say in these videos. I'm kind of like, no, this is how it's going to work out. And, you know, hopefully you like it. So I do apologise, even if I make mistakes. As I said, I'm not a virtuoso by any means of this instrument. I just love playing it, you know. So. Um, I just have to remind myself, just in case. So, story. Second story. Third story, fifth story, I don't know. When I was in the recording studio for the last official EP that I made as an EP, um, we'd gone into studio and I'd written a track called Beyond the Skylight. And what was really interesting about that song was that it was going to be my first ever mandolin tune that I'd written because I'd written it solely really based on the mandolin to begin with and I remember going into the studio and I'd sort of spoken to the producer at the time and said to him like you know I've kind of got this tune but I played it to him on the guitar because really the guitar just sounded sort of more fuller really I didn't we didn't really know how I was going to record that track actually I think out of all of the tracks on the EP I think that was the one that I was most unsure about how I wanted it to come out and the reason was because I tr wanted to try and mimic a sort of Goo Goo Dolls style mandolin part on it where the, the acoustic guitar and the mandolin almost merge into one. Anyway, we went into studio 
laid the guitar down and I remember speaking to the producer and saying to him that you know really it was originally for the mandolin etc etc and I sort of played him it like with the so it goes like this so it goes like... so it's basically the verse and I said to him about it and he said yeah well let's just put that over the top and I sort of did a solo strangely enough in the track as well like was um, and he sort of just started off like that really just really it was the greatest tune for me to just sort of like figure out what my what a mandolin is truly capable of and the fact that I could do like little solo parts in it the fact that I could do whole chordal sounds oh you know and it just really I mean the mandolin is such a flexible instrument I don't think people realize actually you know and when you see amazing you know um, so much I don't love it as much as my bazooki because obviously my bazooki you just you're capable of doing more for me but yeah so it just really led up to the idea of me playing with this mandolin and giving me confidence and like I said when I was doing this track on the skylight the fact that we sort of labeled it over, we put it over the top it just proved to be really good and I've never looked back and that is really my love affair with the mandolin. Um, so yeah. So hopefully you like that. And that's it. Farewell to this instrument. Farewell to my history of instruments. I do have a couple more, but really they're not as interesting as these. And this is probably the instrument, like I said, that was always good to end on because it was the one that sparked everything off. And so, as per usual, I need to practice on this instrument a bit more. Totally rusty. But I just love playing it. You know, and hopefully you might be encouraged to do a better job than me. So... Thank you as always for watching, hope you're having a nice time whatever you're doing, whenever you see this video, you might be watching this in the future, which would be kind of crazy, so you know, is there life on Mars, is there, come on David Bowie, um, but yeah, thank you, and it really means a lot, as always feel free to spread the word, like, share, subscribe, you do not have to like this video, you can put, um, you can put a thumbs down on it if you want to, I don't mind, you know, like I said, it's probably like this instrument I need the most practice on, to be fair, from what I did. But there is a link below that 
you hear me play a full tune on the mandolin. And I'm sure out in the ether somewhere there's the track beyond the skylight. There was also a track on that EP that I'd made called You Get Me Through, which also got the mandolin on it quite heavily. It's quite a prominent sound. So yeah, you know, it's a familiar instrument. I just need to get more familiar with it. Because like with any instrument, if you don't practice it enough, you just completely forget and you fall apart. And then you do music, you do a video like this on YouTube and just expose yourself. Not literally, by the way. Um, so there you go. Thank you. So, yeah, take care, everybody. Bye for now.